Hello. So we are back. Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, let's try and fix something. Okay. Because many of you guys yeah, ask about motherboard uh, repairs. I don't know why. Because actually fixing a, a motherboard is just a small part from a business. Yeah. So you probably are running a repair business or you are looking to learn. But motherboard is just a small part. But that's not important. If anyone asks, you know, it's it's okay. We can do. We have a motherboard, yeah? So we have a job. But this is not for repair. Okay? So we need to put a diagnostic on this motherboard. We charge 10 pounds. Because we are supporting like self repair, so. It's okay, you know. This was was booked in eleven. Does mean yesterday for diagnostic. Let's diagnose this board. Maybe we can learn something, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have a nice motherboard. What I'm saying is nice. It's nice because you can see straight away, you know. You have a dedicated graphic chip. This is a nice one. You know, the laptops are two types. The cheap one without the graphic chip. It's just the... It's an empty place. Or the one with the graphic chip. Okay? So this is a nice one. This is a nice one. Probably i7. Processor. NVIDIA graphics, yeah, chipset, RAM memory, Wi-Fi card, a lot of video RAM. It's a nice motherboard. So we have to diagnose this board and, uh, you know, the customer will pay if we, if, if we can say, you know what? That's the problem. That's your fault. Yeah. Usually this will be very short. Well, because it's a video. And uh, I try to help the others with these kind of things. We'll try to e make this more clear. Okay. So, what we can check first, we have nothing, we don't have screen, we don't have charger, we don't have charging port, we have nothing. I think the first step is to recognize how much you can from this motherboard. So, we have no schematics also, also yeah, we have no schematic, no board view, we don't even know what laptop is. I have no idea. So what we can see here, a big port here, which probably this is the charging port. The charging port must be connected probably here. Processor. Power supply is a lot. You see coils, MOSFET, coil, MOSFET, and we have a big chip, so probably is the this is the processor power supply. Another important power supply, probably this is the graphics one. What we can see more, more power supply, each coil, it's a power supply, yeah? Another power supply here, look, another power supply here, you can see the path. You remember we spoke about that? Coil, two MOSFETs, and you see the capacitor. Coil, probably these two MOSFETs, or these two. Coil, two MOSFETs, yeah? Output capacitors, input capacitors. Coil to MOSFETs, coil to MOSFETs. Probably this is the RAM power supply, coil to MOSFETs. Another power supply here, coil to MOSFETs. Another one here, coil to MOSFETs. Realtek chip here. Probably you can't see the, I can see the, the logo. So I suppose here probably we have like a audio speaker connection. 
or probably not probably this is going on audio board because I can't see like any jack on the board I can't see any jack so it's not jack here so I suppose we have a audio board oh yeah what about on the other side RAM memory okay on the other side what do we have on the other side on the other side we have the super IO chip Lenovo so I suppose this is a Lenovo laptop yeah you can see but because of the light you can't see it's a Lenovo what do we have more this is a USB-C port so I suppose this is a new motherboard that's USB-C yeah oh a fuse here a fuse here a fuse here yeah okay so that's what we can see on this motherboard we have two bio chips here two bio chips actually you know it's but because we are saying bias but like memories yeah one two they have a special shape maybe you can see better under the microscope let's try it so that's what i mean when i'm saying you know they are different they, they looks different those chips yeah you see this is this is one and that's the second one twenty five q eighty yeah that's clear and this one twenty five b sixty four yeah sixty four bits by chip probably okay uh let me switch back so yeah yeah let's go on the next step i did have few comments about the video so let's say uh, people ask me to edit the video on the repairs the problem is i try to keep this channel real and uh, yeah i can tell you from beginning yeah i'm too lazy to edit the videos it, it will take me some time time which is not from the work time probably will be from the family time which is not good for me but the second problem is editing a video you don't have idea about how much you spent on that job and uh, how much you will have to spend on that job to just have an idea about the price what you will ask for that kind of job it's, if it's worth to be repaired you know and i'll tell you a funny thing like few months ago we uh was on that time not for a few months no um, no 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 it's more probably like one year or more was with that um, damage on the iphones long screw damage yeah long screw damage is that kind of uh, repair which you are doing for a video to show something look i can do this kind of jobs you know but it's no way to spend time like on a regular uh, job you know just you know okay long screw damage yeah let's take the job and let's fix it no you can spend hours you can spend days on a job like that and i know there are people that are just uh, uh, they have video like short video like probably half an hour video one hour doing long screw damage and rebuilding all the tracks from a long screw damage uh, this is insane you know that kind of job and um, we do have that kind of jobs here and the owner comes and um, he said you know what um, I did check the, the YouTube, it looks like an easy job, you can do it, <laughs> you know, because the, the people are making video, they just cut it, editing, and, and finally, you have a half an hour video doing like a full day job, you know, it's not even one day, it can be more, I, I remember I, I work on one, 
Probably like two, two days, but it was a data recovery. There's no way how you can make a video, two days video. But anyway. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't get too well, you know, I told him, you know, actually that's that's the kind of like a top job. <laughs> it's, 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 it's insane, you know what I mean, long screw damage, that's crazy, you know, that tracks, you have like in one millimeter, you have like a lot of tracks there. Okay. But you know what you can do, you can re-forward uh, the video and it will be more simple. Yeah? So let's start with this motherboard. Now let's start. We already we identified the things. Next step... I'm trying to think from um, like a, a beginner, uh, what a beginner will do. It's hard to think what a, a beginner will do. The problem is, on the channel, we have beginners. Like, very beginners, and they they see my video like, Wow! It's nothing wow. We have the middle class, and actually they do understand what I'm doing. And we have probably the high class, which for them, they, they, they're just boring videos. But from a beginner point, if I will beginner, what I will do with this motherboard? How how do I will check this motherboard? Because everything it's it's like a unknown. You know, it's it's it's, it's not it's just random things on the board. That's probably that's what a beginner will see on this motherboard. They sold the random things, but it's nothing random. So you have to find and start from something. And maybe it can be funny, but when I was a kid, I was starting checking randomly things. And I'm sure a lot of, of beginners, they are doing this. Checking randomly things. And I will speak a common mistake here. Common mistake, yeah? Uh, they are checking... Um, uh, okay, they have idea about the power supplies, and they are checking capacitors. Okay, cap okay let me get out the multimeter. Dial mode. Checking capacitors. And this is not shorted. That's, that's what probably they are doing. They are checking the capacitors. Let's check another capacitors. These capacitors. And this is not shorted. You have different readings there. See like here. Okay. 0 0.1. So it's not short like that. Okay. Check random things, yeah, on the board, like capacitors, because I have a lot of short capacitors, which is probably most uh, common fault. Another capacitor here, with different reading on the multimeter, which means nothing, yeah? Just checking random things. And we have a mistake, yeah, a common mistake. The people checking this capacitor, yeah? So let's check together this capacitor. Okay, 0 0.008. We have a short. Because I, go, I got a lot of emails. Like, probably like 60, 70 emails every day. And they say, they, they, they start checking things on the motherboard, and at some point, they check this capacitor, and short. More of that, yeah? More of that. They start checking MOSFETs. Checking MOSFET. Uh, yeah, you can see. On the... Show me nothing. Okay. This is show me nothing. They check this MOSFET. Yeah? Uh, this... Yeah, okay. This one. They check this MOSFET. Let's check together. Maybe not this one. No, di not this one. Yeah, this one should be. Maybe it's this one. One second. I think it's this one. This one, yeah? 
checking this MOSFET 0 0.08 one more time 0 0.008 we have a shorted MOSFET you know what I mean I, I got a lot of emails about this let's have a look under the microscope what I'm doing here okay one more time one more time one more time obviously this is a power supply with two MOSFETs a coil capacitor checking the capacitor 0 0.08 yeah checking the MOSFET yeah we have two MOSFETs okay 0 0.08 look on the MOSFETs yeah we have three pins together here these three are together soldered together these four are soldered together checking so if these are four soldered together check these four with these three 0 0.08 so how you can explain that I'm sure like if you have knowledge you can explain very easily this kind of uh, this is not a fault this is not a fault let me grab yeah, I do have a pen let me grab a paper yeah give me one second Okay, just ex just to explain you this fold. So let's draw this power supply, which is like any power supply from this board. Yeah, all are the same. So a power supply. You have two MOSFETs. Uh, I should make them square. Okay, let's make them square. It will be more easy. So what did we see there? Uh, yeah, three pins all connected to ground. Yeah, that's the ground. Four pins all connected together. Yeah, they are together, and obviously, it's going on the other MOSFET which has uh, three pins all together. And this, they are connected together again. And this one has four pins, which they are connected together. And this is plus. Okay. So here I should have 19. We have these, those capacitors. Yeah, let's just take the schematics out from, uh, from the motherboard. So this is ground. Yeah, three pins, four pins together here. You can see four pins together here. Four pins together connect straight with the three pins from this chip. And these four pins together, it which is plus, I told you, has a capacitor connected with ground because these three pins are ground, these capacitors are ground. So this is a ground area. Okay, so one more time. We have two capacitors here. Ceramic capacitors connected to ground. Ground. Okay, this is a processor power supply. That's two fa two phases. Uh, uh, are two power supplies for the processor. But let's get concentrated on this one. So from here we have the coil. Coil. And after that, we have the, the black capacitor, which we tested, yeah? That's it, it's an electrolytic capacitor connected to ground. And from here, this is a po processor power supply, yeah? Processor. And what do we have here? From here to ground, yeah? We have 8 ohms. And uh, this MOSFET, yeah? You remember we checked the MOSFET? This MOSFET here and to ground, yeah, we have again 8 ohms. 
okay? The explanation is very simple. Hey, give me one second. Okay, the circuit of checking, yeah, you come with a multimeter here or here, actually, yeah, you are checking, not the capacitor, if you come with the multimeter here, the electric circuit will not be on this side, will be on this side, so the, your multimeter will be from here to the ground, okay? You check the MOSFET, the circuit will be from here, from the MOSFET. Obviously, it's going from the coil. Coil is just a wire, yeah? It's coming to the processor and to ground. So, that 8 ohms is actually the resistance of the processor, okay? Checking the MOSFET, you don't check the MOSFET. You think you check the MOSFET. But actually, you check the resistance of the processor. Based on the, you know, on the ohm low. I don't think, no, no not on the ohm low. On the Kirchhoff low. The current will, will, um, the current will go on the shortest way to the ground okay and the shortest way is the processor which has 8 ohms and that's the common mistake you believe actually you have a shorted MOSFET or a shorted capacitor but it's not okay you know I I, I want from long time to clear this mistake they say I got a lot of emails people ask me for help look I have a shorted processor, I have a shorted, no, shorted MOSFET and uh, shorted output, but it's not, 8 ohms is normal. Even on the graphics, on the graphics, let's check on the graphics. On the graphics power supply, compare with ground. Yeah, like 2 ohms, yeah, you can see this is the output, yeah, the output of the of this power supply, the even the graphics has a dual phase power supply. So if you check this MOSFET, if you check this MOSFET, I think that's the one. No, this. No. Okay, no, these two are channel, uh, these two are connected to plus, these two minus, okay. I got it now. Maybe I'm not touching. Let's check together. Let's see together. What do we have here? So we have two MOSFETs. And the capacitor is here. Yeah, it should be this one. But where this is going? No, this is the plus one. This is the plus. So those are connected to plus. These are the top MOSFETs and this is at the bottom one. And the bottom one give me no reading how this is possible. Okay. Okay, let's clear this. So this is the coil. Coil connected to ground. Zero ohms. Capacitor. The output capacitor. The output capacitor. 
zero you see like two ohms you can see on the multimeter two ohms so what i'm checking wrong and this is a bad example yeah this is a bad one actually i tried to prove a point but i can't prove it because these are dual mosfets yeah so each mosfet is dual you see this truck which is going under the mosfets actually solder behind here why i'm saying it's a dual mosfet because you have two gates you have one gate here you can see this pin is a gate i don't think it's on focus okay this is the, the second gate here so you have a dual mosfet so inside of this mosfet actually are two mosfets okay same here two mosfets same here you can see they have two gates same here two gates okay so we cannot check the theory because these are dual mosfets this one from here are not dual you know the processor ones no are not are normal you can see it's very easy to see because it's only one gate one gate here here you have one gate okay but you'll do probably same mistake like with the processor you go and check this capacitor the electrolytic one plus minus and you'll see okay i have two ohms so we have a short no you don't have a short that's normal okay but you have to start from a point when you diagnose a motherboard you have to start from a point and the point which i will start is the charging port connection hmm? so let's check together to see the input okay so the input of the power on this motherboard is like that you have two pins and two pins and you have the middle pin two pins two pins and a middle pin we don't care about the middle pin to find which one of these two is ground they are using two pins to carry more current that's why you see two pins connected together so i will put one promo on the ground and i will check which one is ground so this is not ground but this is zero zero so this is the ground so on the charging port here we have the ground here we have the plus here should be 19 volts plus we can see the truck is going on the other side of the board let's check the other side of the board where it's going and the truck is going yeah you can see where it's going so you see the connector the pins of the connector again yeah plus this is ground check this with this is zero because this is ground yeah it is zero so what we have here we have a fuse fuse which is good zero zero you can see we have some carbon resistor which are low ohms resistor zero zero you can see on the multimeter and from here is going again on the other side of the board yeah let's check the other side of the board on the other side of the board is coming here this is our first mosfet so my 19 volts coming here four pins all connected together three pins connect them together yeah so it's coming out here these three are connected with these three which are together so my 19 volts coming here is coming here and it's going out here all four pins are connected together yeah they use more pins from the two reasons one to carry more uh, current and two is to release the heat you know you have like four connection four pins you can release the heat more easily from the chip okay so you have four pins and this is the output so here we should have 19 volts those mosfets are just meant there to protect the motherboard in case something wrong happen like overheating like a short 
so they will cut the voltage it's just an extra protection because we have already a protection on the charger yeah but it's an extra one a extra protection it's always welcome yeah so this is the output on the output we have a bridge actually it's nice the fact that it gives us the opportunity to isolate the parts of the circuit on the motherboard and we have a current sensor a current sensor is just a low ohms resistor yeah you can see on the multimeter on the multimeter we have zero ohms we cannot check we cannot check exactly the resistor it is a very low resistor probably we can but like 0 0.05 ohms something like that yeah and from here you have two trucks yeah which is going probably some power management chip okay this is audio chip this is not the power management but we, we don't care it, it, it does something else yeah this is no point checking the power management chip we do if we don't have a power problem we don't know yet because we didn't test it with, with the power to see exactly what he's doing what I'm trying to do is to draw the schematic so from here yeah this is the point yeah yeah I'm working on the motherboard yeah that's your son yeah okay uh, we don't know yet I just start now yeah so just give me like one more hour okay thank you oh, that's crazy the, the customer just went here with the he was here with the motherboard asking about this motherboard <laughs> probably we should hurry up okay what do I want to make you understand that's the point where the input circuit yeah let's say this is the input protection and things it's ending so whatever you see here this truck is the main power rail this is going everywhere and we will check together yeah we will check together so after the current uh, the current sensor or resistor or yeah this is the one this truck is going inside of the motherboard you can't see it yeah you can't see it it's going on each power supply so let's take this one check on the multimeter you have zero zero yeah it's not ground checking with the ground is not ground you see it's not ground yeah So it's not ground it's because you see we don't have uh, any resistivity with the ground it's plus it's going inside of the motherboard so you see it's going here we have zero zero on the multimeter you can see the multimeter this one from the middle it's zero zero so my truck is going here yeah which is going more because it's like a star configuration yeah it's going everywhere let's see it's going on this power supply from here let's check on the capacitor zero zero so it's going here what about on this power supply from here is going here check on the multimeter zero zero so it's going here okay it's going on the processor power supply check on the multimeter zero zero yeah I'm checking on the, the, the that ceramic capacitor from here from this one this each power supply each power supply they have these capacitors yeah so I'm checking on this point of the capacitor not on the ground not on the ground here okay let's check more it's going on this power supply from here Check on the multimeter, zero, zero, so it's coming here, okay. On this power supply from here is going. 
look look on the multimeter zero zero yeah we have here another power supply let's check here he's going here zero zero you can check on the multimeter so he's going here what about more power supplies what about this one this one is going here zero zero yeah so you see this main power rail it's everywhere and it's supposed to be 19 volts give me one second please
Okay, sorry for that. Uh, what was saying about the schematics, yeah? So the 19 volt track is going everywhere. So let's draw what we've seen on the motherboard. What we've seen? So the schematics should be like that. So what do we have? We have the charging port. Okay, so we have two pins for plus, two for minus. These two are together and are coming to ground. Yeah, these two are together and it's coming first on the fuse. That's a fuse. After that, a carbon resistor, which is a low ohms resistor. Uh, after that, it's coming on one MOSFET. From the, this MOSFET, it's coming on the other MOSFET. And from this one, it's coming to a current sensor, which yeah, give me one second, one second. This is the current sensor, which is a low ohms resistor. And from here, you remember, we seen these two pins, which is going to some power management chip. The current sensor, it always will check the current. If something goes wrong here, you have a short, the current goes up, yeah? The voltage on these, uh, on these two points will rise, and the power management probably will cut down the power for these two MOSFETs, okay? And this is my main 19 volts power rail. From here is going everywhere. Like for example, yeah. Uh, on each power supply, remember we did check. Let's say like that. It's going to the processor. It's going to the graphics, yeah. From here is going to what do we have more? We have a RAM, yeah. RAM. In each power supply, the schematics of each power supply is this one. Yeah. This one. From here. And obviously the MOSFETs, you have a gate, gate here, you have a gate here. The gates are going on some driver, you know. It's a it, it's a chip which is driving the power supply. It's switching the, these MOSFETs. So what do we have more? RAM, graphics, processor. We have 5 volts, 3 volts. Yeah. One is 3.3. 3.3 volts. Another one is 5. Okay. But I'm sure are more. So that's what we have, that's the schematics of probably like any motherboard. Probably 99% of the motherboards are like that. Okay. And you have the chipset. That's probably like uh, another power supply. But anyway, that's not our problem. Our problem. What do I want to check? Yeah, this is plus here, this is minus. This is one MOSFET. It's not important if you channel P or N. Can be two channel... Uh... Let me check. Let's see together. So it's coming to four pins, so this is channel N, the first one, channel N, and the second one can be a channel P, can be, I'm sure the first one is channel N, okay, good. So now after we know what's going on here, we can try and diagnose the problem. So what do I want to check? I want to check what current is taking the motherboard here. I want to check if I have 19 volts present on all these power supplies. Yeah. 
and after that we can go forward yeah so let's take the power supply power supply we can see on the power supply we have 19 volts I will not connect the ground here on the connector because ground is everywhere so I can connect the ground like this like here okay and plus here so let's see what happens we have a current limit around 2 amps plus and the power supply is taking 160 milliamps you can see there 160 the first once 0 0.16 0 0.16 amps is 160 milliamps this is a very bad news <laughs> I'll explain why so most of the laptops just leaving on one side the MacBooks they are coming on without the battery they are not on so now it's nothing on so there should be nearly no current you should have some current well let's check you know let's let's keep the plan first let's check the 19 volts power rail plus 160 milliamps multimeter and let's check again yeah first let's check on the current sensor after the two mosfets we should have 19 we have 19 multimeter sorry let me switch on volts volts on that current sensor we have 18.8 19 yeah, it can be 19 let's make it 19 we have 19 you can see on the multimeter there yeah here good does mean on the processor power supply I should have 19 check on the multimeter 19 on the graphics power supply we should have 19 check on the multimeter 19 okay on this power supply which I don't know what is doing we should have 19 check on the multimeter 19 on this power supply we should have 19 19 on the RAM uh, power supply we should have 19 check on the multimeter 19 so we do have 19 everywhere yeah so what do we know we have 19 everywhere so this circuit is working yeah it seems like everything is all right 160 milliamps is not too much it is too much when actually the laptop is not working so something from these power supplies yeah something is drawing up to ground 160 milliamps one of this we don't know which one yeah can be no one like it's probably a truck can draw to the motherboard 19 volts but probably not okay so somewhere 160 milliamps get lost for some reason it's not supposed to be like that okay so we can have like any power supply with these schematics this is schematics like any power supply and let's say we have a sh sh partial shorted MOSFET which is drawing here and to the ground the, on this case can draw it through the processor like 160 milliamps or we have two shorted processor and is drawing to the ground 160 milliamps or one capacitor is drawing to the ground 160 milliamps 160 milliamps so something is getting that power yeah what what will happen if something gets power the power cannot get lost the power is getting change yeah based on the yeah it's getting change on heat so yeah probably something is getting hot 160 milliamps it's it is a bit of current you know it's not like so what can be logical speaking yeah for 
from my experience a MOSFET if it's shorted is shorted you know what I mean if it's shorter it's short it's not like okay it's partial shorter so it's taking 160 milliamps so probably it has like how much 100 ohms hmm? if it's short it's short capacitor the same the capacitor it's not like partial shorted to have like a hundred ohms if it's shorted it's shorted the problem is if you have a shorted capacitor like on this case let's say we have a shorted capacitor and it's, that capacitor is taking 160 milliamps no one care so the laptop should work fine but our board is not working so if i have this capacitor let's say this is partial shorted and this capacitor actually has a hundred ohms nothing will happen the motherboard will still work fine okay so we don't have a shorted capacitor shorted mosfet i don't think so a mosfet can be short or not simple what do we have more what do we have more what is always under the voltage on a laptop when it's off when it's off we have 19 volts everywhere that's under the voltage one power supply is running and is switching the 3.3 volts one actually on the laptop you think you have two 3.3 a big one 3.3 volts this is high amperage high amperage which is 3.3 for the wi-fi for the hard drive for the dvd drive yeah for the screen and you have a a, a small one a, a low power one for the chipset yeah so here we have no no chips oh, sorry the super io chip super io chip what the super io is doing is reading the power button yeah is reading the bio chip also probably on this one the bios is inside but that's not important right now on this point is not important what is doing is reading the keyboard yeah the keyboard is reading a lot of things it's it's actually it's also it's uh, speaking with the battery yeah on the data lines is starting everything yeah so this is important this is a startup chip this is starting everything. It's starting all these power supplies, yeah. And it's starting the laptop. As soon as you press the power button, this chip will start everything. That's why he it's always under the power. Because obviously if it's no power here, if you don't have 3.3, how he will know when you press the power button? Uh, or when the computer is on sleep and actually press the key on the keyboard so the only way he can know if he if it's always on but this chip is always on now the problem is we have no schematics so I have no really idea where is this power supply 3.3. I know where is the super IO. But the easy way what you will do, yeah? If you are like on different level, what you will do on this point? You don't know which is the 3.3 volts power supply. You don't know which pin from the super IO is meant to have 3.3. The super IO is let me check on Google. If you find a data sheet, yeah. IT A2 IT A226E two, two, A226 okay now you learn another lesson actually like on this case there is no way 
how you can find something about this ship. This have nothing to do with our problem. Nothing, yeah? So it's nothing on Google about this chip. No data sheet. Nothing. So like on this case, you have no idea what that chip is doing. I know it's sad, but that's the reality. Because if I'll know on each pin, we have plus and minus, I can check with the multimeter, if I have 3.3. .3. Okay. What can I do more on this point? If I'm lucky... No, let's let's think, yeah. So this three point three, if this three point three is taking hundred and sixty milliamps, it's taking hundred and sixty milliamps because the three point three volts power really shorted to ground this one, three point three volts. The way how can I check three point three? Because I don't know on which pin is this, on which pin is three point three. I don't know where is this power supply, I don't know where it is. What, how you can check is around the, the, this chip, you have a lot of capacitor which are connected to ground. Yeah? You have around, I don't know, five, six, seven capacitors connected. You can check the capacitors if you have a short there. Or if you have an external BIOS chip. The, 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 the plus from the BIOS chip, it's also going here, so you can check straight on the BIOS chip, if you have a short, if you have a short at 3.3 .3 volts power here. So, let's try on our case, just, you know, now like a beginner thing, because there's no other way, there's no other way, it's a beginner thing to check for 3.3 .3 volts power here on the super IO capacitors. Yeah? So I don't want to spend time trying to find a 3.3 .3 volts power supply because I can check straight here. Okay? So let's see together. You see, this is a ceramic capacitor. You can see them? This one, this one, ceramic capacitor, this one, ceramic capacitor. This one, ceramic capacitors. Okay? So let's check together. Multimeter, let's switch the multimeter on ohms. Diode, yeah. This capacitor, good. It's not shorted. Oh no! Check on the check on the multimeter. Zero point zero one, so like one ohm. Okay, maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe that capacitor is doing something else. Let's check on this one. Zero point zero zero zero. You can see zero point zero one. You can see. Check on the multimeter. So these are zero ohms. Okay. What about more capacitors? This, this probably is doing something else. This looks like a capacitor from a power rail. But it's not. This. It's again zero zero. You can see but this is like zero point zero three, like three ohms. Maybe because I'm not touching three ohms. Okay. How about this? This like six ohms. How <laughs> about this? This is good. So probably this is doing something else. This is doing something else. So my problem is I have like three shorter capacitor, which from my opinion, that's not, not normal. You know, what's the point if you have two grounds to use a capacitor? What we can do next, yeah? You remember we have two BIOS chips. BIOS, we have like two memories, which we suppose this one 
it's a memory from the chipset because the chipset is next this one also can be a memory from the chipset yeah because it's near to the chipset okay i'm just guessing if 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 okay give me one second okay so if if this one just i can hope is connected to the this is the bioship actually it's a bioship that's mean the pin number four and pin number eight should be shorter the pin number four is ground the pin number eight is plus so let's check pin number four yeah because you have the dot here you have pin number four and pin number eight check on the multimeter we have two ohms one ohm you can see so that's not normal and the other chip memory pin number four pin number eight this is not shorted you can see so i'm sure this chip is the memory of this one is the bio chip from the chipset and this one can be from the chipset can be from the super io sorry super io but just to be sure yeah because i'm not sure maybe it's uh what i'm doing here what what i did okay maybe that let's say yeah let's say okay even this chip because i seen chipset with two with two memory chips with two bios chips yeah maybe this one it's also from this one but it's getting power from that 3.3 volts power rail what we can do we can check yeah I will take pin number, uh, let's see, pin number 6 and 7. I will use my probe to short that pins and check the pins with any pin from the Super IO. Yeah? So let's check if it's not shorted to ground. It's not shorted to ground. So I will check if I have 0, 0 with any pin from the Super IO. okay check there yeah check on the multimeter zero zero that's mean this pin is coming to the super io that's mean that's our bios chip okay yeah. one sec give me one second Okay. So we know. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. We have a shorter three point three volts here. We have a shorter three point three volts on the power rail. What we can do because we can find the okay, let's find it, you know. Just to make you happy. Let's find the three point three volts power rail. It was probably is getting hot. That's easy to be found. Nineteen, okay. It's taking hundred seventy milliamps. So the three point three volt should be a small chip or coil or which is probably is getting very, very hot.
So we have the super IO here. <laughs> oh, that's hot. So that's a 3.3 volts power supply, which is which is gone. Yeah. Let's have a look together. This is getting very hot. So 160 milliamps is taken from this power supply. Let's try to see those capacitors connected to ground. I don't know which one is outputting 3.3. Yeah, this is zero zero. This is not normal to be zero zero. So probably this is the yeah, and we have a jumper here. Obviously this is the output on the three point three. But let's say you know what? Let's let's say you know we didn't found the the three point three volts power supply, and that will come with three point three. Yeah, with three point three. On the bio ship, you know, that's a power rail. P number 8 is a 3.3 volts power rail, yeah? Now let's see what is getting hot. Yeah, 3.3. Ground. I'll lower the current. Probably around 1 amp. And P number 8, yeah? I say bio ship, P number 8. And it's taking 1.6 amp, 1.5 amps. It's not on the limit. Uh, what do you think is getting hot? What do you think is getting hot? Let's try together. So power supply, power supply, and bio ship in number eight, yeah. Bio ship in number eight. You can see the chip. Yeah, one more time. P number eight. P number eight. You see how quickly it's getting evaporated? Because that chip is shorted. Yeah. So on this case, we have a shorted super IO. Okay. I think we can check even there. 3.3 on the on that jumper. We have a jumper, and that jumper I'm sure is for 3.3. For yeah, you can see on the super IO. One more time. 3.3. That chip is getting mad hot. So that's the problem. With this motherboard, Super IO is dead. Why the Super IO died? That's interesting. Let's have a look together. So, what is this here? What this is doing here? I didn't see this before. Okay. So you see, this motherboard has m multiple issues. Even this one is a switching power supply. You see, you have a coil. You have this, which probably it's a MOSFET. This is a power supply, but this, this is something else. U9. 
which has a power rail which is going here. Yeah, give me one sec. Give me one second. Okay, so we have a second problem here on this motherboard. So one is the Super I.O. which is dead. And what do I think? I think this connector, because I can't see any other connector. This one. Yeah, this one is from the hard drive, the M2 hard drive. This is speaker. This is speaker. Oh, this is from my audio board. Huh? One second. Okay. So the only place where the battery can be okay, this is a broken connector here. But this is not from the battery. Most likely this is from the battery. If this is a battery connector. And this chip has something to do with the battery. That's, that's how the Super I.O. died. That's crazy. I didn't see this before. That's the power button here. Hmm. Yeah, that seems more logical. Because if you play on the battery, if you have an issue with the battery, I don't know. You have two tracks. Yeah, the clock and the data, which is coming from the Super I.O. down to the battery. And the Super I.O. is speaking with the battery, starting the charging, stopping the charger, is checking the level of the battery. So that's the only way how the Super I.O. can die because someone play on the battery or something wrong goes with the battery. Okay? So probably the man will come back with the motherboard. What he needs? He needs a Super I.O. But this I have no idea what it is and what he's doing. Can be related to the charging. Can be. But I was optimistic before because the BIOS is outside. That's mean you cannot you can replace this chip and you can have a working motherboard. But I don't know about this one. But anyway, we'll see. Hopefully you, you found this video helpful. Yeah, this is a weird case when actually you have uh, two faults, not only one. What I will do, probably I will replace the Super I.O. I will remove this and I should have a working motherboard. Probably it will not charge the battery, but I should have a working motherboard. But I will speak with the customer, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a second video replacing the the Super I.O. Yeah. 
So hopefully it will be a second part. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was a long video. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video. And uh, see you on the next one, yeah? Yeah, probably. Yeah, we do have a few more jobs. We'll see if we have some because it's very busy. The shop is very busy. See you later. Bye.